All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another uh, interview with local band Smokeout. I am your host, Tyler Most BG, and I'm honored to have the man himself, Randy Pascarella. Did I pronounce that correctly, by the way? Yes, Pascarella. You okay, fantastic. He's in. Uh, well, you've been kind of in and out of bands, but if I were you, it's kind of like your main baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It has been for about since 2011, so it's our 10 year anniversary this year. <laughs> ten, congrats on 10 years, man. Yeah. It's how did crazy. you How did you guys uh, get started? So I've been in a band with Dan, our guitar player, since 2004, man. We've been freaking jamming for a long time. I was 11 or 12 years old when I joined the band with Dan. And a uh, little kid that knew one beat, but they're like, get him in the band, you know? Like, <laughs> That's cool. So like, yeah, me and Dan, we still write and we get together and it's crazy. It's been almost 15 years and just our chemistry together is just like ridiculous. So like, I don't know, like I write a lot of the guitar parts too. And, you know, we kind of feed off each other's energy. And that's how If I Were You has been going for the past few years like that. Really fast, I want to plug your stuff real quick. At mm. If I Were You Band and at Randy Dot Pascarella are your Facebook pages. Is there anything else you want to throw in real quick? Um, just Pascarella Recordings. Um, that's like my my business page for uh, for for recordings. I get a lot of actually business too. Like, yo, who recorded your band? And um, you know, it all comes back to me, which is really cool. So if people are looking for If I Were You Sound, they could come to me for mixing and mastering, other stuff like that, anything with audio. Fantastic. Yeah, Are you always born and raised in New York or did you have you ever resided somewhere else? Yeah, no, I've always lived within the same, you know, 20, 20 minutes, you know, just like, but yeah, I'm in Wappinger at the studio now and, you know, kind of Poughkeepsie area. I grew up playing shows at, you know, at the Chance in Poughkeepsie and yeah, just like it's been here for, for my whole life. Poughkeepsie. I know that. <laughs> I've gotten a submission or two from Poughkeepsie and I never. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. You're like Poughkeepsie, what the heck? Uh, <laughs> were you, were you in it like heavily involved in music in high school? Like, did you play band or anything like that? Um, I mean, I played like percussion and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't like my passion doing that. Like, I just wanted to be behind the kit. But you know, like you had to pit, take an instrument, and I was just, so I did percussion. And um, as soon as I got home, you know, I jumped on that kit. My dad taught me when I was little, and you know, I was like, Dad, teach me a new beat, and you know, joined the band from there. But yeah, I had um, a lot of interest, and then going in, you know, high school, getting older, I started getting into more of the recording because then my band started recording, and like that's what I wanted to do at that point in time. Was there, was there a point where you heard somebody else singing that was drumming and you were just like, damn it, I gotta, I gotta start singing now. I gotta start singing and drumming. I gotta step it up. Yeah. I mean, so it all came back when, like, when I was little, like my dad did the same thing. He was always behind the kit, you know, head turned singing away and, you know, screaming back, you know, with his band and, you know, I looked up to him and then, so my band was doing it for a while, but I wasn't singing, you know, it was, it was Dan and then. You know, we would always just have me sing like on the recordings, or whatever. You know, like you know what, you should you should actually sing. But you know, you, you go to think of like you know under oath and stuff yeah. like that, and yeah, it's just like you know, is that is that like did you have to reteach yourself how to play a little differently because to be able to like kind of? Oh yeah, of course. Just like when I'm singing in the studio too, like your your posture is totally different, and the way you know you can't sound like you're on a freaking freight train with double bass and uh, you know like <laughs> it's like everything changes, especially like when I write my drum parts. Like I'll always write my drum parts first and then get it down. So it's like muscle memory. And then I focus on the singing live instead of like learning everything like at the same time. Cause then it's just like, what do I learn first? Like the melody or like, you know, like it's, it's, it's crazy at first, like, especially writing in the studio. <laughs> Is, has there ever been like a time when you guys play live where like maybe a tech comes in and drums and they get, and you're able to go to front man status just for a song? yeah um i mean we've talked about it like a lot of people like yo we want to see like randy as like a front man like as if it was like kyle and me like but like i was going to do it with guitar once but i don't know i can't really play guitar standing up i've just i've always learned guitar sitting down and i don't know like i always just resort like behind the kit i feel comfortable and you know own it behind the kit but yeah i don't really see me like as a front man i've done like guest vocal kind of spots and you know it's always fun but i always see me like behind the kit playing drums and singing Cool. I've I've got some uh, some YouTube stuff queued up. It's all muted for copyright reasons, but are you cool, cool. with me playing some of your videos and stuff like that yeah, in the background while we yeah. chat? Yeah. Okay, I gotta hit, hit uh, share this one, share, and then we're gonna move this guy nice. down here. So this is Faithless. Tell me about Faithless. How was how was this song written? Hmm. So I'm trying to think. I think this was. I wonder if it was like one of our singles off the album so like we started you know writing more of that drop tune stuff like at a little bit of 
life after death like when we wrote like pull me under mm-hmm. we get like got a seven string we're like oh shit like <laughs> we gotta like keep writing stuff like this so you know like i would i would come together like with an idea and you know dan would feed off of that and you know like we even with like the lyrics too like we're not like designated like kyle you have to write the lyrics so i have to write my chorus like sometimes like dan will write my choruses or you know kyle will write this this part so like that's like you know this song pretty much wrote itself and we're like we have to do a video for this one but i think going forward with our videos we want to do like more of like a story line because this one's like it was cool it was like one of our i think it was our second music video and they were both kind of just like performance music videos and we want to kind of and I have a story rather than like people like, oh yeah, cool. They play instruments. And <laughs> we get to see our favorite band for the first time. Cause like we don't really play that many shows or have like a, too much of a online presence of us playing. So we thought it was cool to have like performance, you know, videos like this. Yeah, absolutely. yeah this is a, yeah, this was freaking just this song. I remember just wrote itself. And then we're just like, Kyle, oh, I got to throw a bland in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <a bad. laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, songs that write themselves are kind of like, I would say some of the best music that bands come up with because it just it just naturally flows. And yeah. I think I think Pull Me Under was the first song I ever heard from you guys. It's short oh, shortly after that, uh, I wrote down, Do you remember me blowing you up about please meet me at Nam? Please meet me. Yes, at- I do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're like, yo, I'm here. You know how it is. It's so busy and it's like I had never been there before. Yeah. And I, I went by myself because uh my wife something came up and she just she couldn't make it like a day before. And I was right. like <laughs> it's like it's like 10 for anyone that's ever been it's like it's like 10 to 15 walmart super centers combined Nuts, if man. not bigger than that yeah it really is and it's also like we went to a couple like after parties too it's like you know i've got to see some bands play and i don't know just like overall vibe i've met so many people out there like i've gotten the job to do to work with nickelodeon just by meeting friends of like my good friend in, in my other band i the fire um he's working for nickelodeon now and you know we met him and and so, like, I actually mixed the Baby Shark, like, on Nickelodeon. Like, I got that job from meeting people out in Nam, like, over there. And Baby so it's, it's Baby cool. Shark, I believe, is the most played YouTube video in history. As That's of now. nuts, man. So, <laughs> congrats for being cool. part of that. Thanks, man. It's funny. Like, as I'm working on it, my daughter runs around the corner, like, wondering where the sharks are. I'm like, no, it's just the audio. I'm mixing it. You don't see it. <laughs> so, you, uh, you mentioned your dad earlier kind of taught you how to play. Uh, yeah. what band was he in and is your mom at all involved in like your musical creativity um so my dad was in like a lot of you know like his cover bands and you know like he you know just played with uh my uncle and stuff like that so i don't think he was like in any real like kind of he, i think he did like uh his own originals like back in the day but they mostly did more cover bands and you know they brought a great crowd and you know family parties you know on youtube there's like a video of me and my dad doing like a dual drum solo you know, oh, that's playing it. next to each other, which is freaking awesome. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, I've always took influence, you know, like from my dad learning until I got the double bass part. And he's pretty much like, you're on your own, you know, like he he was all into like Led Zeppelin, classic rock kind of drumming and, you know, fundamentals kind of stuff. And oh, then yeah. uh, I, I learned the heavy shit and, you know, it, and he, you know, respected it and came to every single one of my shows. And, and my mom, on the other hand, she just like supplies like the earplugs and just supports. So <laughs> as long as she supports, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. They but, let me have, you know, band practice in their basement for years and years and come down with the brownies and snacks and, you know, like <laughs> that's awesome. Good parents right there. Hell yeah. Now, now it didn't stop with you, though. Carissa has some serious musical talent also. Hell yeah. Were you yeah, involved sure. in, in the growth of her as a talent? Yeah, I mean, obviously she, by the recordings, but like, right, that. right. Yeah. So, I mean, she would always like see me play, um, you know, like guitar and, and drums and she's like, I want to pick something up. So I actually like taught her how to play, you know, a couple chords here and there. And she pretty much like took it and ran with that and wrote her first song, did a couple covers. And, you know, now like for the first time, like ever, like you would think that we would be writing, but you know, we dug covers here and there, but we actually like wrote a song and, you know, we put it together. It was like actually a song that Dan and I had for, for something else. And, we're like let's let's make this something for you and it's cool like that we actually get to write our own stuff instead of like me and Carissa working on a cover or something but we you know we hang out all the time we're always you know we always talk about business you know whether we're going to the gym or skating and it's like we're always staying on top of you know like what's <laughs> that's things awesome. to do as far as for business and you know for music and stuff like that yeah she's got uh she's got once on that I forget the title as I'm talking to you but it goes like bump 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 Oh yeah, so, yeah. That one, my that's like one of my wife's favorite songs. Oh right yeah, now. we play yeah. it all the time here. It's that's jam. awesome. If yeah, I remember could... writing that one and I pitched it to her, I was like, "What do you think of this?" She's like, "Yes, this is the one." <laughs> I'm <laughs> this like, "We have a video for it." Yeah, and I did the video for that on my freaking cell phone. I'm just like, "Let's do a video." You know, had the gimbal thing and the whole thing. So now I wind up like picking up a you know nicer camera, and we just shot a video for uh for her new song too, like that I was just talking about, and um, 
we should be finishing it like later, like this, uh, this month and trying so to just, figure out how to like market it though, you know, instead of just putting it out, here it is. <laughs> so you just stay working. You don't get any, oh, yeah. no days off, no days. No. Off. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get one day off and I have like one day off for like a family day on Sundays. And then any other day I'm working 15, 16 hour days and I love it. You know, I, yeah. you know, I try to I try to make time for, for everything and, you know, for, you know, going to the gym and mental health, you know, and stuff like that. But it's like, everyone's always asking me like, what are your hobbies besides music? And it's like, honestly, like when I'm not working on those people's music, I write my own music. Cause like, you know, that keeps me sane. And you know, it's, it's, it's literally a part of me. I don't know what I would do without doing any type of music, you know? Right. Me too. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm awesome. not, I'm not involved in being in bands anymore, but I just want to support and lift up every band that I hear just of course, yeah. as much as I can. Uh, what are your thoughts on Joey Sturgis? I know he's heavily involved in a lot of the tones and plugins you use. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I always look up to Joey Sturgis as like you know, uh, engineer and, and you know mixer and and now even like as a businessman, you know, with the plugins and stuff like that. And you know, I've grown up listening to his you know his mixes and like wondering like who recorded this and it was all like those bands from like you know the two thousand nine, ten, eleven era. Like you know, like we came as Romans of Mice and Men and Tack Attack. Like that was my shit. And like you know, everybody wanted his sound and you know with the Pod Farm guitar tones and um. But yeah, then like as like he progressed too with his business and. You know with the ex asking alexandria and stuff like that you know he started coming out with his plugins and i actually got to meet him at uh, the nam convention center one year and it was at the end of the day and um it was just joey and some other some other worker and i actually got to walk up to him shake his hand and like he actually was messing with one of his guitar plugins as i play guitar and like I, I got to talk to him take a picture with him and but yeah he's like super down to earth and you know he's a that, that's freaking, awesome yeah he's awesome have you have you ever <laughs> thought about or uh explored maybe making a plugin yourself a lot of people ask me that too i i don't know like maybe like there's so many tools that are out there that like helped create my sound and i feel like you know it's kind of like frankensteining other people's like plugins to like create what i already have that's already available to me mm -hmm. i mean maybe it's something in the future but i don't feel like there's like I'm not really like a technical person, like where it's just like, it's got to sound like this. It's more of like a creative thing where I could close my eyes and I could use stock plugins all day. If it gets me to that sound, you know, like then it's like, that's all, that's all I need. But, um, and I think my like ultimate goal is to like, and I always say like to help these like younger artists, especially like, you know, in my area that like come to me with the song and they're just like, help, you know, like, because <laughs> like, you know, you want to, you want to help them feel something. They have an emotion in them. They want to, you know, they want to bring it out and they don't know how to do it. So it's like, that's like what I love doing instead of like working with these huge bands that are already established. And it's just like ego city in the music industry, you know, it's just like, I want to work with like real people and like the people that have the same interests as me. So it's like, that's like my ultimate goal is being like an engineer and in, in the music industry. It's a fantastic goal. Yeah, man. Uh, what genre do you play in your spare time when you're not working on other people's music? Um, I mean, I love, listening to pretty much like what everybody says i love everything and then you play like a death metal song they're like what the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> no like i i honestly listen to everything to be honest like i've been working on a lot less metal lately like i mean not by choice i would love to work on more heavy stuff but a lot of people come to me for like more pop kind of stuff and pop rock and you know i work on like some country albums and i mean what i really love Dang, listening to is that was like, that was gonna be one of my questions would you ever work with a country or hip-hop artist yeah yeah i work with quite a few hip-hop artists and country and trap and a, a lot less metal these days as like people wouldn't see because you know they see all my bands like heavier stuff and to be honest like we're doing better the heavier we get you would think it'd be the opposite way like you know if you do more like a rock stuff you make more money whatever but like we're doing good you know like our followers are going up constantly and you know we've got a quite a few heavier tracks Excellent. but yeah i mean i listen and play whatever you know like I'm, I'm very emotional driven as you can see with this song like this song spoke to me the lovely uh song but the cover that i did I'm like, I have to put my own spin on it, you know, Billie Eilish. And, you know, I wanted to like make it my own. And actually I was going to download like an instrumental. I'm like, nope, I'm making this my own. I'm going to, you know, I did all the strings and the piano and production. And, you know, I pretty much closed my eyes. Like that, like with this song, literally, like I always tell people I was in the studio and I was tracking it normal with lights on and everything. I'm like, I'm not feeling it. It was like, I waited till later in the day, shut all the lights off. And I sang the song in complete darkness. Like, and I was like, that's the vibe. And that's the vibe I wanted to get with the music video too. I wanted to portray like the same kind of like emotion and, and feel and mood. You can really hear the vibe in the song too. Like you capture the emotion really well. In yeah, the, man. That's song. Thank you. Uh, what band would, if I were you tour with, if they could pick any band in the whole world, you would open man. for this band on a full tour? So like our influences are like, they're pretty different. 
Like, I would say, like, me personally, like, I love periphery and I love technical stuff like that. Fuck yeah, I love periphery. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, I love all progressive metal, genty kind of stuff. And, you know, and like, I go from that to like my all time favorite band being Icy Stars. You know, I take huge influence and we got, you know, Devin Oliver on our track. And, and, um, you know, I would say between periphery, them, and, um, I mean, Architect, I mean, their sound is so different now, which is like props to them for Those are for three, them. three of my top 10 favorites also. No so. shit. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Would you, would you like, ever consider taking like an electronic horse sound and influencing it in, into if I were you, or is that just kind of Icy Stars thing? Yeah, no, I mean, like, we have a couple, like, things, like, I tried, you know, I always say, like, yeah, there's no, no rules when you're writing, you know, like, if you listen to, um, what's that song that was on last album, it's like, Drop E, and, um, oh, No Control, like, it's literally, like, dubstep in it, um, mm-hmm. like, in the intro and the outro, and I'm just, like, you know, I, I kind of want to do that with, like, the newer stuff that we're writing, it's, like, not even thinking, like, oh, what are people going to think, like, just kind of, like, write for me, and I, I love all those, like, you know, those techno kind of you know sounds especially and... new demons that that album oh was yeah so oh, funky Classic, EDM heavy <laughs> uh, well, yeah we played with them at uh the i matter fest too and it was, it was cool to see him live and i actually got to meet Devin and hand him one of my cds to him like so it was like yo this is you on the track and it took him a second for like him to realize like what it was and it clicked and you know i was just like oh shit so it was cool to meet him shake his hand and give him like my my cd that he was actually on yeah like this this is it this is the finished one here you yeah right yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you recall when pascarella re- recordings first started what was the first artist you recorded that you, that you it, got paid for yeah um i honestly think i think you know them um diamonds to dust do you know them oh yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah. so did you, did you just do their newest song the one that has like the that satanic yeah br- Dude, that yeah. is that is like one of the nastiest breakdowns I ever heard. <laughs> They're nuts, man. So yeah, I've been working with um the guy Barry for a long time. I think it's been since 2010 or something like that. And when I first started my business right after high school. And um, yeah, it's it's crazy. I remember just like the style wise, like they were doing, you know, it's still like their back to the roots, like August Burns Red kind of, you know, metalcore kind of stuff. And um, you know, over time they kind of built their sound and, you know, you kind of follow like the trends and what people like. So they're going more like the deathcore route now, but yeah, I remember like the first time recording them. And I think it was another band called Orchard Hill back in the day and back in my parents' basement with my, you know, like on a random desk with my laptop and, you know, people loved it for what it was. And, you know, everybody came to me, I think it was more like, cause who were like, who recorded my last band, you know, and they just came to me just for the demand of that and just built the business off of those. That's awesome. How many bands yeah. would you say you're in total, like right now? Because I know there's what there's here. It's called here after. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Well, like how many bands that I'm in actually in? I mean, there's so many. I I get lost. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I'm actually physically in two bands. I mean, if I were you and I the fire. Okay. My two my two main bands. Um, the here after band was just like um like a mega feature kind of thing to get like a bunch of uh vocalists from the area to just like you know come together as far as like to get the scene back and you know light the fire again for you know like when covid's done and kind of just like send a good message too as far as like for what the song had to do with mental health and stuff like that what's the yeah, uh I, oh my, my bad i didn't mean to cut no, no i was just saying I, I the fire and if i were you or my two babies then i write for both of them i used to have a control 24 uh but i do not anymore but what is the mixer board you have in the background right there um, I mean, this thing is a big paperweight. It's just like at the studio that I've, but it's like a sapphire something, I don't know, Soundcraft sapphire. Um, but yeah, it's literally like everybody comes in and like, yo, I'm sick. And then I'm like, we're going over here to the digital side. And it's like my focus, right? Eight, you know, eight channel preamp. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's just so easy. Just plug it in, you know, Thunderbolt and it's quick. I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's working with whatever you're doing. It's working. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like in this video, <laughs> you, you can uh, you can only take one album to an island, any genre. What album is Damn. it? Holy shit! All right, I got it. That didn't take me too. So I guess it's like the first thing that came to my head. I'd have to say it's either like one or two albums with the same band. It'd have to be like a Linkin Park album, man. Like it'd have to be like Hybrid Theory or Meteor. You know, like it'd have to be one of those because like every single so- one of those songs is just like, oh yeah, this one. You know, like you get excited like yeah. when the next one comes on. And like everybody knows every freaking word to that and i don't think it would be like i mean i have so many favorite bands too these days but it's nothing like you know classic remembering yourself like screaming to like 
break in the habit when I'm little. Like <laughs> it's it's funny you it's funny you bring that up. Uh, uh, reanimation was actually my favorite from them. And, oh yeah. And uh, I I've always thought like since Chester passed, it was the perfect time to drop reanimation too because they could just use the stems. Right. And, and I hope they do something beyond. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. When did you know you wanted to be a musician? Um, I mean, I have pictures of me like at two years old holding drumsticks and you know like i just grew up i remember like singing and my dad always my dad was always playing drums you know i'd had those huge headphones on just so, like it would block out sound and i'd always be at like you know my dad's shows at parties and sitting right next to him while he's freaking bland through drum solos and shit like that but um you know i started i taught myself guitar when i was like i say 14 or 15 just by watching other people play guitar and it's like you know like i i wanted to play drums and guitar you know i wanted to write a song instead of like just playing banging things you know i'm like i want to write music now so like that was i don't know i would say like more my teen years like actually writing music but you know i played drums since i was probably like six seven years old where i was actually like doing beats instead of just pots and pans smacking around but yeah i'd say about six or seven years old i kind of like got into it seriously you got hooked yeah man yeah and then like I, as soon as i hit 11 or 12 I remember I joined the band and like we had to say like that I was older than I was because we were playing in bars and like yeah he's 16 I had the mustache back then anyway mom would be like is that chocolate milk on your face like mom it's my mustache <laughs> that is funny. so they got me in the bars and I played and yeah it was cool <laughs> Let's put a little chocolate milk on real quick I'm ready yeah exactly <laughs> yeah now this is a a weed smoking show so I must ask uh are you 420 friendly and if not have you ever dabbled before I'm 420 friendly but I've honestly never tried i just feel like i have bad anxiety and everyone's like oh it might help you i'm like i don't even want to chance it i have so many friends that do i'm just like you do you you do you <laughs> that's cool it's not for everybody but what would you yeah. say is your worst habit the worst habit procrastination <laughs> that's all, like, all of ours <laughs> yeah seriously yeah or yeah i guess it's just like the habit of like yeah, I staying focused on one thing and not getting the, the shiny object syndrome or just like, oh, this this is new now, you know, like something like that. Like, I don't know, I would say it's a pretty bad habit. I've been getting better with like, you know, especially like with phones, like as soon as a new phone come out, it would like I would always have like the habit of like, OK, I don't need this thing anymore. You know, I need the new one. So it's like trying to like just respect and like be appreciative for like what you have stuff like that. But I can't think of like any like weird like tick kind of things or habit like things like that. Other than like procrastination and trying to stay motivated, but... it's, a, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what would you say is the best concert you ever attended as a fan? Um, I mean, fucking Breaking Benjamin was amazing live. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't like, expecting that. Yeah, like it, I mean, I'm like, were these guys playing the freaking CD? Because like I, the energy I saw them in Poughkeepsie too, and it was at the Civic Center. And I just remembering it being like such a huge sound. And, you know, like you, you hear the, the drums and stuff like when they're like just sound checking, it sounds freaking larger than life. And yeah, like they're, they're another band where I knew like so many freaking words or songs to sing along. But I would say like that had to be them. And the first time I saw Architects, I've seen Architects like five times. I flew out to Nashville just to see them. Me and my wife, I was like, you want to go to Nashville? Like joking around. She's like, yeah, fuck it. And then like found a babysitter and we like left like the next day. <laughs> I'm like, I've never done that. I've never actually had the opportunity to see Architects, but it's on my list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they freaking, they kill it, man. They, I think they were headlining, too, and they played a shit ton of songs. So it wasn't, like, five songs, and they were off. Like, they played a good, like, 12, 14, like, song set. Good deal. Yeah, man. I got a fan question for you coming, coming, coming in from Mr. Burns, which you may or may not know if you actually really think about it. But uh, yeah. what was the song you recorded for another artist that made you notice your work stand out from others? Huh. Oh, okay. Let's see. There's a couple. Um, so I recorded Currents. Um, and I re try to think what, uh, I started with their EP and it was a victimized EP. And, you know, I met the guys, it was all different, like members and freaking awesome guys. And I remember creating that sound with them. And then like, I actually got to work on their full length and, um, was that, that was a life lost album. And that they kind of got me like a lot of business, you know, we kind of helped each other out. Like they, you know, they, every time they would have a show, they'd have my business cards out and they would always be like, yo, who recorded Currents? You know, and they would always like lead back to me. Um, same thing with like Shadow of Intent. I did Shadow of Intent's first, um, I think it was like their first full length that I did. Um, and that's kind of like, I think that was 2000, maybe 15, 16 kind of time. And um, yeah, I think that's like when I was, 
you know, started to get busier and busier. It was like around that time. Same thing with my like life after death album. That was like kind of like when everything just started kind of exponentially getting higher and higher. Oh, and yeah. Then, um, yeah, I did. I think I did their Withered single and then they got signed. And so I got like engineering credits on for Currents, like Withered. Um, so that particular experience like kind of catapulted you up a little yeah, bit, especially yeah, because they were like, here, 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 here's where, right. we, where we worked. And uh, no bands do that. Yeah, like they'll, they'll, right. they'll kind of be like, oh, yeah, we recorded here. But the fact that they're actually like passing out business cards is just super cool. Yeah, homie, homie love uh, right yeah. there. Yep. And then another one I would say like more like more more of a recent within the past couple years. Um, Good friends of mine uh, in Saving Bifes. They're from Vermont. So they actually traveled, you know, quite a bit. I've had actually same thing with like some of my friends went to their show or somewhere far. And, you know, they just like you got to record here. You know, you think just like, yeah, sure, take the business card, throw it in the garbage, whatever. But like, I met the guys, and you know, like, we're great friends now, and we have a good, you know, like, um, I've done, I think, uh, a full length and EP, and you know, we just have great friendships together, and it's cool. I love meeting. That's what I love about the industry, too. Everybody's connected to as much as there's egos everywhere. It's like, it is like a family, like, when everybody's like trying to, you know, win it at the same time instead of being more of, I don't, you know like a battle of the bands i can't stand that we're just like my band's better it's like why don't we just like help each other out so right. i would say you know over the years it's just like working with these bands it's cool to see everybody supporting me and i support the band it goes both ways you know oh yeah i got two or uh, two more for you and then i'll cool. let you go um what can we expect next from if i were you like now that everything's kind of open up uh yeah. are we are we doing our tour are you guys gonna be able to come to california soon yeah 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 <laughs> cool 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 so like yeah so like uh, i would say like our plans like so it's our 10-year anniversary we're actually doing some kind of like like best of kind of ep thing where like i'm actually mixing our first song that we ever wrote as a band which is fucking awesome so like I think, yeah, it was like 2011. So like, I'm remixing that. I'm like, wow, taking a trip down memory lane, like lane, just like listening to these like old songs. So we're doing like a couple from this EP, from that album. And like, we're putting it together, like as like a remix and we retract everything. And then the new uh, Rory, uh, one with Rory is going to be on it too. So that's kind of like something just like to give the fans, like even fans that don't know those old songs, you know, like they'll hear it with a new quality and it kind of like, you know, bring some new life into those songs. So like, that's what we have. We already started writing for our next album. Um, you know, it's like as soon as we finish our last album, we're already like on to next, you know, it's like we're just always writing. I can't not write. So we got that. And then like we definitely want to play more shows. You know, we said we were going to do like our first tour <laughs> and then 2020 was just like, nah, be. <laughs> no. it, was, it was like, watch this. And then it just like shut everybody down. But I mean, like I miss, I mean, yeah, everybody, I'm sure everybody misses playing. And once we get some, you know, a, a good set list, I, that's another thing. I want to get a good set list where it's not like, Cause we would always play the same songs because we only knew like a certain amount of you know nobody had extra time to learn new songs so like when we start playing again i'm like i want to get a good set list going and you know play some new stuff that people actually want to hear but um yeah i would love to come out to freaking see you over there and it'd be cool and even if there's like another like nam convention center man we gotta we gotta link up definitely <laughs> i look forward to it uh the last thing i want to leave you with is something that i ask everybody to do that does one of these interviews uh plug yourself real fast and just say you're watching local band smoke and i use them as intros you've probably seen them on some of the reviews i do i i try to have i probably got about 90 of them stockpiled but yeah yeah um yeah. give me about five seconds okay whenever you're ready cool what's up i'm randy from if i were you and you're listening to local band smoke out and then, uh you could check me out at uh pascarella recordings.com and you know my other band i the fire if i were you and um yeah peace out yeah perfect perfect Randy, I appreciate you doing this, man. At Randy.Pascarella, of course, Pascarella Recordings, and at If I Were You Band. You're awesome, brother. Cool, I, re I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks you for, for the doing this. Thanks for man. It was a good time. Hell yeah. Cheers, yeah, and enjoy man. the rest of your day. Yeah, you too, man. Peace Thanks. out. How are we going? Later.